Greetings, and welcome to another video math lesson with Mr. Thompson. Uh, we're going to talk more about gradient in this video, <clears throat> and uh, how to find the gradient of a line using coordinates of two points that that line goes through. Um, so, we've got, uh, we'll just draw our little uh, coordinate plane here again, x and y axes, okay, and I'm going to draw a line for us that we're going to use for an example got this line and I've um, highlighted three points given the coordinates for three points on this line okay one at 2 4 one at 4 7 and one at 6 10 all right now remember that to find the gradient we do rise over run now we're gonna um, you could <clears throat> of course you could just look and say okay how much does it go up and how much does it go over but we want to do this uh, systematically because we don't always have a graph to go off of and it turns out it's easier sometimes to not just use the graph okay so bear with me here um, so we're gonna start by looking at the two points uh, these first two points um, the two four and the four seven okay now I'm gonna call these points point one and point two um, and remember that we like to go from left to right when we're doing gradient so the point on the left I've chosen to be point one and point two, so it's kind of like we're traveling along, traveling along this line from point one to point two. So to find the gradient, the first thing we want to do is figure out the rise, right? The rise is how much it goes up. Okay. Now you'll notice that the rise um, gives us a um, a difference between these two points, and it kind of goes goes along. You notice the rise goes up, just like the y axis goes up. Okay, so the rise coordinates with a difference on the y-axis. Okay, we went from the point four to up to the point seven, right? Uh, the coordinate, the the y coordinate four up to the y coordinate seven. Okay, and you can see that those are our y coordinates. Okay, so to find the rise, we're going to use the y coordinates. Okay, so um, we're going to call these y coordinates y y two and y one because this is the y coordinate of the of the point that we called point 1 and this is the y coordinate of the point that we called point 2 okay so in order to find the distance along the y axis um, that we went up to find that rise we have to subtract we need to take the big uh, um, y value and subtract the smaller one and we'll see that obviously we go three spaces one two three but because seven minus four is three so over here I'm writing out a little formula for how to do this every time even uh, with different lines whatever lines we want okay we're going to we, we to find the rise we subtract the y coordinates okay and we'll do that for this particular one here in a second let's talk about the run though first okay the run goes over right we go over from this point over to uh, over to here right and that that run you'll notice corresponds with the x-axis right it goes along parallel to the x-axis um, and the the run tells us a difference of uh, points along the x-axis. So it goes on the x-axis. We went from two over to four, right? Obviously, two units, right? Two units over. Okay. So um, in the same way that to find the, to find the run, we subtracted the y coordinates. Well, I'm sorry. To find the rise, I mean, to find the rise, we subtracted the y coordinates. To find the run. We just subtract the x coordinates. We'll call those points x2 and x1. And our formula over here is to find the run uh, is x2 minus x1, x from the second coordinate. And we subtract, we take that and subtract the x from the first coordinates. Right? So for our little example here, for our for this line, right, we're going to plug in um, the y coordinates, y2 minus y1 okay so which is 7 minus 4 right y2 minus y1 and then we're going to plug in x2 minus x1 so x from the f second one subtract x from the first one so again we take that 7 which is the y from the second coordinate we plug that in first and then we plug in the y from the the first point and we're going to subtract those, and then we also subtract the x-coordinates, 4 minus 2, right? Well, 7 minus 4 is 3, and 4 minus 2 is 2. So, 
that doesn't reduce, it's simplified, so our slope turns out to be, or sorry, our gradient turns out to be 3 over 2, 3 halves. If you want to write 1.5 or something like that, that's fine, but 3 halves works just fine. Okay. Now the interesting thing is, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what points we use to do this. It always comes out as 3 over 2 for this line, because the, the gradient is always the same for any um, straight line. Right. So we could have used, uh, we could have gone from this point, point four seven, up to the point at 610, and we get the same thing. We would, Our formula would look a little different. It would be 10 minus 7 over 6 minus 4, right? The y from this one minus the y from that one over the x from this one minus the x from that one. Um, and But 10 minus 7 is still 3, and 6 minus 4 is still 2. So... Uh, it still works, right? We could even do go from the first point that we started with all the way up to that second one, right? And we'd get uh, 10 minus 4 over 6 minus 2, right? This y minus this y over this x minus this x. And uh, it still looks a little bit different because 10 minus 4 is 6 and 6 minus 2 is 4. And you might say, well, that's different. But guess what? 6 over 4 reduces to 3 over 2. So it does still work. It's still the same, right? Now, um, you could even go from a point somewhere right in the middle and get you get weird decimals and things like that for your coordinates, um, but if you um, are consistent, it still works out. The important thing to notice here is that uh, the numbers sort of on top of each other come from the same point. So that 7 and the 4 came from that same point, okay? The X and the Y, they line up uh, sort of on top of each other here, okay? The 4 and the 2 came from the same point, right, down here, okay? Likewise, the 10 and the 6 were from that same point, and of course the 7 and the 4 are still from this point, the 10 and the 6, the, these all, each pair on top of each other come from the same point, okay? And that's what's, that's the most important thing to keep consistent, okay? Let's look at one more example here. Uh, another example, we're going to find the gradient of the line that goes through the points negative 3, 6 and 1, negative 3. Now we don't have a drawing this time. You could, as I said before, you could just plot these points and sort of do it visually. How much does it go up? How much does it go over? But that's actually more work than you need to do. We can just use our fancy formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay? We can uh, pick which points we want to be point 1 and 2, it actually doesn't matter as long as we're consistent, okay? Um, as long as they line up on top of each other like they did before. So I'm going to say uh, this negative 3, 6 is point 1, and 1, negative 3 is our point 2. So the y coordinate from uh, the second point, okay, our y2 is negative 3. So we do negative 3 minus the y coordinate from the first point, y1. So negative 3 minus 6 over the x-coordinate from the second point, 1, minus the x-coordinate from the first point, negative 3. Okay? And then we just uh, calculate and simplify. So negative 3 minus 6, we could take negative 3 and go um, further down 6 more, so that's negative 9, right? And 1 minus negative 3 is a little bit tricky when you subtract a negative you're actually adding the positive. So 1 minus negative 3 is uh, 1 plus 3, which is 4. Okay, that's simplified. Can't simplify it anymore, so that's the answer. <clears throat> and that turns out to be a lot easier than just graphing, um, and especially when you, get, when you practice it and you get really quick with it. You'll notice now here again, um, the negative 3 and the 1 came from the same point, and the 6 and the negative 3 each came from the same point. They're on top of each other, and that's really important. The Y's are on top, the X's are on the bottom. And that's all there is to it. See you next time.